Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Dr. Jayabrata Das. Jayabrata earned his Master's in Organic Chemistry from the University of North Bengal before completing his PhD at the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, under the supervision of Professor Dabrabrata Maidi. Currently, he's a postdoc in the CERNAC group at the University of Michigan. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Jayabrata. Thanks a lot for coming on to share your work today. Thank you, Matt, for the kind introduction and invitation. I'm excited to present my findings in PhD about forming unsaturated lactones through a CH activation approach. Bicyclic lactones consist of two field cyclic structures, one of which is a lactone ring. Due to their prevalence in numerous natural products and bioactive compounds, they have gained tremendous attention from organic chemists. But how do we prepare such bicyclic lactones? Some of the most traditional routes are pyruvate oxidation in which a ketone is converted to an ester or idolactonization in which an alkanoic acid is converted to lactone or oxypalladation which does the same job. However, some of the major limitations of such methods are they require highly designed starting materials which are often not readily available or to get the final product also it takes multiple steps instead of single step in most cases which eventually limits the scope and applicability of such methods. Our aim with this project was to simplify the synthesis of such lactones. In my PhD, I was involved in remote CH activation of aliphatic compounds, which is considered more challenging than the typical CH activation of aromatic CH bonds. Now, one of the most established strategies to carry out an sp3 activation is to utilize an external template or detecting group. Now, in this approach, the template first needs to be added with the substrate and then the template eventually helps in coordinating to a transition metal and therefore in CH activation and finally in functionalization, right? And finally, the template needs to be removed from the substrate to get back the original substrate. And here is an example for that where an 8 aminoquinoline is attached with the aliphatic acid here and then after functionalization, this group or the 8 aminoquinoline group need to be finally removed from the substrate to get back the original carboxylic acid. One of the better approaches to do the same thing in a single step instead of three step is that we can utilize the functional group present in the molecule as the template or director. In this case, in case of aliphatic acids, the carboxylate could act perhaps as in director to carry out CH activation. However, there are challenges associated with this carboxylic acids. One of them is, is the weak coordination provided by the carboxylate group is enough to induce CH activation. And the second hurdle is that even if the carboxylate can coordinate with metal, it does that in two different conformations as shown here. One is known as kappa 1 and another in kappa 2. Now, in a kappa 2 coordination mode, the both oxygens are involved in binding with the metal and in a kappa 1 mode, only single oxygen is bind with the metal. And for CH activation to occur, the kappa 2 mode considered to be ineffective because now the metal is kind of locked and coordinatively saturated. So, and it is also away from the CH bonds in the molecule, right? But in this kappa 1 mode, of course, since the metal is bind only with single oxygen, now it has the chance on access to other CH bonds which it can activate. But the problem is both of these conformations are often in equilibrium with each other. So a CH activation reaction to occur, we need to shift the equilibrium from the kappa 2 mode to an kappa 1 mode. And how do we do that? So the usual approach to shift the equilibrium towards the kappa 1 mode is to utilize an alkali metal or an alkali metal salt like sodium, cesium or potassium. So now an alkali metal because of its higher charge density will bind with the, both the oxygens in a kappa 2 mode and the transition metal in this case like palladium would be then forced to bind with only single oxygen and therefore then it can take part in a CH activation reaction. Using this strategy, I was able to form a range of products starting from a simple aliphatic carboxylic acids. And these are different products formed using different coupling partners. However, if you notice carefully, I always had to rely in these cases on the activation of this terminal methyl group for forming these products. But in order to 
access other range of products one needs to look at other groups present in the molecule like a methylene group or a methine group but the conventional knowledge suggests that the activation of a methylene in an aliphatic compound is much more challenging than a methyl group due to steric hindrance so in order to overcome this challenge we thought if we can design suitable substrates and suitable ligands which perhaps can help us in overcoming this limitation of methylene activation and to do that we synthesize the simpler looking acid which is cyclohexane 3 acetic acid now if you carefully look at this carboxylic acid you will find that the carboxylate group present here has two options to activate at the gamma positions right so if you look at this gamma methyl group or it also has a gamma methylene group which are equally accessible now going by the conventional knowledge one would expect that the reaction should always occur at the methyl however the trick in this case we thought is that even if the methyl activation could be easier in this case but the subsequent step after the activation would be difficult which is in this case is a reductive elimination step and we know that a reductive elimination from a palladium 2 intermediate is not going to be easy however it also has the other option to activate the methylene group now even though it is more challenging if it occurs then it has the option to go for the beta hydrate elimination and if it goes via beta hydrate elimination then it can form this alkenoic acid and of course this alkenoic acid then further can cyclize to form this lactone now in order to test this hypothesis we took this substrate and subjected this to a ch activation like condition like an bulky aminoic acid and other suitable reagents and what we did find out is that under certain conditions this kind of aliphatic acids indeed cyclizes to form is bicyclic lactones now what's more interesting in this transformation you would see that how many things or how many events are going on for this single step transformation of course there is a ch activation and then there is a co cyclization but more interestingly there is also a double bond formation in the cycloalkene ring a range of fused lactones could be formed using this strategy for example shown here one can form five five bicyclic lactones one can form seven five bicyclic lactones and one can also form six five bicyclic lactones macrolactonidation which is considered a challenging reaction in traditional methods is also now possible using this same protocol and as you can see the 12 member drink containing acids or even a 15 member drink containing acid some of which could be prepared from a natural product like muscone could be also cyclized using the same strategy the ability to synthesize bicyclic lactones from aliphatic acid presented us a great opportunity to utilize our method in various natural product synthesis now here is an example where you can see tricodyne is a natural cisquiterpene and usually the synthesis of this cisquiterpene requires the formation of this bicyclic lactone shown here and when we looked into the literature we did find that to prepare this lactone one need to start from this 3,5 dimethyl cyclohexanone and in nine steps you can form this bicyclic lactones but now with our new method what we can do is you can start from the ketone in this case 4 methyl cyclohexanone but in just four steps we can now form the same bicyclic lactone and eventually the tricodyne could be formed in a significantly reduced number of steps which of course increases the efficiency to form such complex natural products here is another example where capnilin which is a marine natural compound also requires the intermediacy of another 5 5 fused lactones which again we could form from a cyclopentanone in just four steps whereas in previously the synthesis of this 5 5 fused lactone required seven steps thus our method can be utilized in a number of natural product synthesis to improve the step economy so far what i have talked about is we can take an aliphatic carboxylic acids which looks like this and in presence of a palladium catalyst and a ligand we can form an unsaturated bicyclic lactones through an ch activation intermediate Now, one interesting idea i always had is that if it is possible that we can trap this intermediate by adding an external coupling partner what i mean is now if i add an external coupling partner or functional group in the reaction is it then possible that the functional group can add to the lactone which can further enhance the complexity of the bicyclic lactones and also if you notice that if we can do that 
in the same step we can convert this methylene center in this starting material in the product to an quaternary center which would be interesting but the challenge is that the functional group cannot interfere with either the double bond formation or the cyclization in the product and what we did find out is that the olefin and allyl alcohol could be added in the reaction and when we add this coupling partners what we did find that these coupling partners can now add up to this lactone and form this quaternary center containing products and of course because the quaternary centers are hugely important in various natural products this product seemed very interesting a range of different products could be formed by varying different olefins or different allyl alcohols the alcohol gets oxidized in the product and forms eventually alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde or ketone even tertiary allyl alcohol could be also used in the reaction now to demystify the reaction what we wanted to find out a few question about the mechanism what we are interested is in how is the reaction mechanism and most importantly why methylene activation prevails over the usual methyl group activation and to find out that we did some dft studies and these are some dft optimized structures of three different intermediates the first two are for methylene activation and the last one is for methyl activation and what we did find out from the dft optimized structures energy is that the activation of methyl group is indeed kinetically more favorable which means it requires less energy to activate the methyl group which is in accordance with the literature knowledge however to find out why then methylene activation occurs over methyl we have to look at the energy profile diagram for this activation state and from here what is shown in the energy profile diagram is that the substrate of course first bind with the ligand and the metal to form a reactant complex then it forms the ch activated intermediate via a transition state and if we count the energy required in each of the step then what we will see that the energy required eventually for the methyl activated intermediate formation is lesser than the methylene activation so as shown in this red box that until this step of course the activated intermediate formation the methyl activation is favored however the subsequent next step is the problematic for methyl activation so as shown here this is an uphill reaction which means that for methyl activation to occur a reductive elimination it requires almost 45 kilocal per mole energy which is a pretty high energy for a reaction to occur so what happens is the methyl activation doesn't go forward instead it goes backward and forms the starting materials basically and instead of methyl it goes via methylene activation in a nutshell in a simple manner what i'm trying to tell is so there are two options whether the substrate would go for a methyl activation or a methylene activation which are equally accessible when it goes for a methyl activation it has to go via reductive elimination which requires pretty high energy so it doesn't proceed via that pathway instead what it does is it forms a methylene activation intermediate and once it forms this intermediate it again has two options one it can again go for reductive elimination which again what we saw from our dft calculations is that again this is in high energy pathway so it again does not proceed via this instead it prefers the beta hydride elimination to form this alkenoic acid so if we look at the full structure of how the mechanism looks the palladium catalyst first bind with the substrate and the ligand and in presence of an alkali metal it forms the methylene activated intermediate the methylene activated intermediate then undergoes a beta hydride elimination to form an alkenoic acid the alkenoic acid then undergoes an oxy palladation to cyclize and the palladium then again undergoes another beta hydride elimination to release the product the palladium hydride thus can form palladium zero via a reductive elimination and the release of hydrogen which we experimentally detected and the palladium zero again goes back to palladium two with the help of silver oxygen now when we add an external coupling partner like olefin or an alcohol the complexity of the reaction goes further which means now what happens is once it forms the activated intermediate the olefin or alcohol then adds to this intermediate and then eventually another second ch activation occurs in this case which which is allyl activation if you look at carefully here and the, the activated intermediate then again as usual undergoes a beta hydride elimination and further oxy palladation to form this intermediate from here again just like the previous case it releases the product of unsaturated lactone via beta hydride elimination and the palladium zero again goes back to palladium two 
So in conclusion, we have developed a new method for constructing unsaturated bisaccharide lactones from aliphatic carboxylic acids by a more challenging methylene activation. This is one of the first examples of reverse selective approach where even though there is an option of methyl activation, the system undergoes a methylene activation. The protocol could be generalized for forming various natural products and bioactive molecules that are either core structures or intermediates in various complex molecule synthesis. Finally, none of this would have been possible without the incredible support and encouragement of my PhD supervisor, Professor Devo Prathamaiti. And I thank Dr. Zing Long Zhang for his outstanding computational work, uh, which helped us to unravel the reaction mechanism. And finally, thanks to all of you for your kind attention. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Jaya Brada for a great talk. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.